My name is Mary Klazik, and I'm the trumpet professor at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. Prior to joining the faculty at UVic, I played principal trumpet in Canadian orchestras for 21 years. I'm also a performing artist for Bach Trumpets, a division of Selmer Kahn. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the teaching concepts of my teacher, the late and great Vincent Chickowitz. In particular, I'd like to talk about articulation and some of the ideas behind efficient and successful articulation. When we think about articulation, we automatically think about the tonguing. But in fact, the only important thing about good articulated playing is the same only important thing about any playing, and that is sound. Healthy, good, vibrant, rich sound production. Interestingly, the tongue has absolutely no role in sound production. Sound is generated purely by the wind passing through the lips to create a vibration, and the tongue simply bounces off that wind stream to define a sound in a particular way. Mr. Chikowitz was adamant that the wind not be impeded by blocking of the tongue in any way. In fact, we could say that the wind, as in air in motion, was responsible for 90% and the tongue maybe 10%. This means that we can actually be striking with the tongue much lighter than we think and still get that crisp, clear, fanfare-like style without the heaviness or fatigue or inefficiency that comes from over-tonguing or tonguing too hard. This can be well illustrated in what is probably Mr. Chikowitz's most famous teaching tool, which is the wind pattern. In a wind pattern, the wind and the tongue should be doing exactly what they will be doing when you blow through the trumpet. Literally nothing must change. But we teach our wind and our tongue how that should feel away from the trumpet. Now there are only two types of notes. Notes whose energy increases and notes whose energy is the maximum at the start and then naturally decreases. With increasing energy notes, that would include things like lyric playing, legato tonguing, anything flowy or sustained. But it also includes when we have more than one articulated note fast in succession, even if there's a staccato on those notes. In this particular case, the staccato is an illusion. And the notes, in fact, are very, very connected with the wind leading and the tongue barely involved. In a wind pattern, it would sound something like this. All of those notes are the wind increasing energy, and the tongue is simply bouncing off that top membrane without interrupting. At a fast tempo, that's going to sound crisp and clean and short and staccato. Now notes whose energy is the maximum at the start and then naturally decrease are short notes. This is a very important skill in orchestra for the entire classical and early romantic period. We'll call them open-ended notes. Now in the same way that if you threw a ball across the room, the energy would be the maximum at the moment that you release it, and at no point would it ever increase energy during its trajectory. The same is true of these short notes. There's a natural decay that just follows the laws of physics. In a wind pattern, it would sound like this. Now again, the tongue sounds crisp and clear and direct, but in fact, I'm barely tonguing. It's extremely light. And all of that energy is coming from the wind. I'll demonstrate these concepts with a few playing examples. The first is Arben's number 19. Now this was a favorite of Mr. C because it really illustrated how much the wind is responsible for those crisp, clear articulations that you want in an etude that is essentially a fanfare. First, we have the open-ended short eighth note, followed by two sixteenths, which are the connected wind-increasing energy long style. Once your body gets used to doing that, short, long, long, short, short, then you can start to speed it up, and it becomes automatic pilot with natural energy on both styles of notes. Then I recommend transferring that to the horn also at a slow tempo on a single note. And once you have the hang of what that feels like, 
Again, it should feel exactly like it did in the wind pattern. Then you can play the whole etude. The next thing I'd like to play is the opening of Brandt's Etude No. 2. This is based on the offstage call of Beethoven's Leonor Overture No. 3. And the dynamics go from piano to forte in those first eight bars. But that dynamic change is achieved by wind speed, and the strength of the articulation almost doesn't change. You'll hear in the 16th notes that the tonguing is very connected and legato, but still a clarity and a crispness is achieved. I'll finish with an excerpt from Wagner's opera, Goethe Dameron. This is the funeral march from Act 3, Scene 2, and the dynamics are extreme. You'll hear in moments it sounds like the articulation is very, very strong, but in fact, it's just highlighting the wind stream that has different energies, some extremely vibrant and some very, very calm. The articulation itself remains light, but you get that projection and that vibrancy of sound in the tonguing from the energy in the wind. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on articulation. I've been playing a wedge mouthpiece made here on the west coast of Canada and my Bach Stradivarius B-flat trumpet, 37, medium, large. This is the same model of instrument that I've been playing for 36 years and it always gives me the colors that I want. <laughs>